So in this video, we're going to talk about the retro synthesis of Diels Alder reactions. And it's very important that we know how to make these, but we also need to know how to retro synthesize these, right? So we said that, you know, if I take this molecule here and I react it, right? So if I take butadiene and I react it with ethylene, right? I say this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, and we get our cyclohexane ring with the double bond between two, uh, carbons two and three. Well, we, not, we, need, we, need to, we need to know how to take this molecule apart. So I'm gonna go through the same thought process with breaking this molecule down. So if I take, so if I look at cyclohexene, I know that in order for this reaction to occur, I had to form a bond between carbons four and five, one and six, uh, carbons six and one, and I had to move the double bond between two and three. Well, I'm going to label. So this is carbons one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we just said in order for this reaction to occur, I had to form a bond between carbons six and one. So therefore, I'm going to break that bond. So if I break that bond, I'm going to move my electrons to here. If I form a double bond there, that means I have to move my electrons over here because that otherwise that would give my carbon five bonds and we don't like that and if i move my double bond over here i have to move this double bond over here now look carefully where my arrows are are are, are pointed to i have this molecule i have a line here do you agree well i have a line here look where my arrow is pointed that means i have a double bond there so i have a double bond here and i have another structure well look i have a double bond here also Right. So I know that's coming from butadiene plus ethylene. Right. Notice that on this 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 far side here, they have this arrow coming here, signifying that I have a double bond there. So these are the two products. So it will get complicated very quick. So let's do some practice examples. So what if we have, what if we we're given this on an exam, right? And we wanted to. break this molecule apart, right? What if we are doing this on the exam, we wanted to break this molecule? What would be the starting reaction, uh, starting reactions? Well, again, I'm gonna label, I'm gonna label, I'm gonna count my carbon. So on the top, I have carbons one, two, three, four, five, six, all right? So again, we said in order for this reaction to occur, we had to form a bond between six and one. Well, then I'm gonna break that bond. So if I break that bond, these electrons come here. All right, so if I break that six and five bond, these electrons come here, uh, six and one. Well, these electrons come here, then these electrons uh, between four and five, because we also had to form a bond there, has to come here, All right? And if these electrons come here, then I have to move my double bond here, All right? So look closely where my arrow is going. Now, anytime you see a branch here, that means we have a five membered ring. So no, look carefully. We have a branch here. So that's a five membered ring right up in that good boy right there, right? So if we retro synthesize this, we're gonna have our five membered ring, right? With a double bond here where the arrow is pointing to and another double bond here where, where arrow is pointing to. And here goes my CH2, my branch in CH2, which is right here, All right? So we, get that, we, so we get that part of the molecule plus well, we just see that we have a double bond here and we have another double bond here. Now, how many carbons do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, All right? So we could say this molecule is actually beta thiene also, all right? So these are my, 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 my starting reactants. Now let's look at another example. Right, and you'll notice the pattern just it's just it's just a pattern if I form a bond between six and one I'm gonna break that bond All right so if we're given this molecule what are the reactants what are the starting reactants well again 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 I'm gonna count my carbon so I have carbon one two, three, four, five, six. Well, in order for this re reaction to occur, I, I had to form a bond between six and one. So therefore I'm gonna break that. If I break that bond, I have to break carbons uh, five and four, right? And if I do that, I have to move my double bond up between one and two. Well, if 
if I look closely, if I look closely, if I look closely, how many carbons do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we have a six membered ring. All right, and look where my electrons are going. I have a double bond here. I have a double bond here. So I know that's one of my uh, 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 starting reactants plus. Well, if I just took apart this, well, what's here? We have this alkene here since we have the double bond that that's formed here. So we have a line here with a double bond and then this whole side of the molecule. All right, so, so this will be my starting, uh, so this will be my starting, uh, this will be my starting uh, reaction, reactant. All right, so notice how everything kind of comes together. All right, so let's look at another one. So what if we had this molecule here? All right. What would be the starting reactants? Well, again, I'm going to label my, my carbon. So this is carbon one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, in order for this reaction to occur, we know that we had to form a bond between six and one. So I'm going to break that. For this reaction to also occur, I had to form a bond between four and five. So I'm going to break that. Well, if I break that, I have to move my double bond here. All right. And you could see this is a five membered ring. So we form this from. All right, so look where my electrons are. All right, so I moved one of this double bond here, so I have a double bond here. One of my double bonds came down here, so I have a double bond here. So this is cyclopentadiene plus. Well, we just have a double bond here with two chlorines on carbons five and six. Between carbons five and six. All right. So these, are, these, so these are nothing more simple. Let's, let's actually look at another one. Uh, so what if we were given this, uh, right? And we were asked to retrosynthesize it. What are the starting materials? Well, again, I'm going to count my carbons. So here I have carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to break that bond between one and six. So I'm going to break that bond between one and six. So one and six, right? So if I break that bond between one and six, I have to break my bond between four and five. And I have to move these electrons between one and two. So again, I have this five membered ring because of this, this branch in CH, uh, CH2 here. So you could see this five membered ring here. All right, I have a double bond here and this arrow is pointing down here signifying that I have a double bond here. All right, so I get this from cyclopentadiene plus, well, I have a double bond between uh, six and five here. All right, so there's my double bond and this alda and this ketone group here. Right. So these are my starting materials. So notice the pattern with these reactions here. If I form a bond between one and uh, between four and five, uh, six and one, and then I move my double bond between two and three, I'm just going to retrosynthesize that. So I'm going to break the bond between one and six, break the bond between four and five, and move my pi bond between one and uh, between carbons one and two, and we literally get our our starting material. So again, nothing more difficult, nothing more, it's pretty uh, simple chemistry if you ask me.